Uh, okay, are we good to go now? Taiwo Yedele, who is the chief, uh, who is the West Africa tax uh, leader at PricewaterhouseCoopers, is joining me right now via Skype from Lagos. Mr. Yedele, are you there? Welcome to the show. Mr. Yedele, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me too? Yes, I can. Good morning and welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. Now, what should we say? <laughs> it seems it's just a week of taxes. It's just a week of increment of taxes or tax issues. Um, it seems that the celebration from the president yesterday after the tribunal judgment was, okay, we're going to increase VAT from 5% to 7.2%. Give me your analysis. Give me your own views about that. Yeah, you're right that we're having uh, increases in taxes, and we also have a new tax that was introduced also in the past uh, couple of weeks. Uh, but essentially, I think even though Nigeria needs revenue to be able to fund infrastructure and social services and whatever government is doing, uh, and also to pay minimum wage, especially at the state level, um, I, I think anything to do with increase in taxes or introduction of new rates has to be done very carefully uh, so that we do not create more problem for an economy that, in my view, is fragile and slow. Uh, growth is pretty slow uh, in, at about under 2% uh, currently. But then, at the end of the day, if government is going to increase the VAT rate, because like they said, this is just now going through consultation and it still has to go to the National Assembly for an amendment of the law, uh, but in trying to do that, government also has to take into consideration other reforms of the VAT system such that the impact of this, any negative impact, is not felt by the uh, poorest and most vulnerable people in Nigeria as well as small businesses. Now, the question is, if eventually the federal government raises tax, that's VAT, from 5% to 7.2%, what could be the implications, you know, uh, in the economy? Yeah, I think the, the most obvious is the fact that you're going to have uh, a rise in prices uh, because VAT is applicable on a lot of consumption of goods and services. So the price would then go up, go up because, uh, you know, businesses and manufacturers will pass that cost to uh, consumers. And because already you have uh, a large percentage of Nigerians are living in abject poverty, this is going to reduce their ability to consume. So household consumption will go down, which in itself has a way of affecting the GDP growth rates. And you also have the tendency that because the rate of VAT is going up, the businesses and companies that are compliant will become less competitive if you don't get everybody who needs to pay to be paying their VAT. Because it means that the margin uh, is now higher. And that can also drive some other businesses into the black economy just to avoid the uh, increased VAT rate. But on the positive side, it's the potential that government can raise additional revenue to be able to fund not only minimum wage payments at the state level. We need to bear in mind that VAT revenue goes 50% to state, 35% to local government, and 15% to federal government. So this if it's properly applied, can help us to be able to build infrastructure and provide social services that can catalyze and facilitate economic growth. Now, just like you said, that we may likely see an impact of, um, you know, uh, goods and services in terms of a price, uh, price hikes. Um, the, the question also would be, is this... Okay, let me just ask you this very quickly. Do you support this VAT increase? Yeah, so my answer to that is yes, subject to. So government should not just increase the VAT rate and do nothing else. So, but if you increase the VAT rate and, for example, you, you introduce a threshold, that threshold means that if you run a small business, you don't need to worry about VAT registration. In, in countries like Ghana, if your turnover in a year is less than 13 million naira equivalent, you don't have to register for VAT. In Kenya, it's about 17 million naira. In South Africa, this is up to about 23 million naira. But in Nigeria today, even if you make uh, 1,000 naira turnover in a year, you're supposed to register for VAT and file returns every month. 
that is too cumbersome for a country where we have high unemployment and we need to promote small businesses. So when government is trying to do this implementation of a higher VAT rate, they have to accompany it with some reforms uh, like threshold. And also part of the other reform they have to do is to ensure that businesses can get full credit for their input VAT so that they don't have to bear this cost as part of their investment because we need to encourage investment in Nigeria. Now the question which the government has always put forward all the time is that we have a very low tax to GDP ratio and our VAT rate is one of the lowest in the world at 5%. Is that enough argument to raise the VAT rate to 7.2%? Uh, is it easier to raise the rate? The, will the government get more money when they increase the rate to 7.2%? Or do you think that even at 5% and the government d does a lot of uh, compliance or enforcement of that 5%, they will make more money so far the tax net or the tax bracket gets wider. Yes. Um, so the, the whole story about Nigeria tax to GDP ratio is low VAT in Nigeria rate is one of the lowest in the world. It, it's what I call a, a single story because it's not complete. In many of the countries where you have VAT rates uh, very high, um, you also find that you get input credit for almost all your expenses, including even when you make investments in assets and services. In Nigeria, this is not the case. So the burden of 5% in Nigeria is potentially even higher than 10% in another country where the VAT system operates properly. So government has to focus on how do we reform the VAT system to be a proper VAT system. And then how do we expand the tax base to get everybody who needs to pay VAT to be paying VAT, including MDAs. We hear in the news that even MDAs, when they charge and withhold VAT on their contractor, they don't even remit it. So you have to fix that problem. And you have to also harmonize and rationalize waivers of VAT. These are things that are eroding the base. The 5%, uh, in my view, is not the problem. It is the way it's being currently implemented. And we need to fix those problems before we start thinking about a rate increase. Uh, otherwise, we may just have more problems than solutions on our hands. Just like what you said earlier, that we, the economy is still very fragile, growing at around 2%. Okay, Now the GDP numbers came out. Uh, for second quarter 1.94% so we're not growing as much as we should grow a lot of businesses have been stifled right now and that means that if the VAT is raised to like 7.2% if you go to a hotel for example to eat food or you go to a, a, a place for one service or the other when this VAT is increased to 7.2% that means you need to pay more even when you're paying for house rent you should also pay more because the landlord or the person giving you the goods or the service would also increase uh, the price of that goods uh, or services because the VAT has been increased to 7.2%, isn't it? Now, let's take a look at this, uh, that the government is also taking a look at perhaps increasing the VAT to 7.2% in order to also have so much money to pay minimum wage. But the question is that if you are increasing the VAT to 7.2% with the right hand, are you not also taking with the left? You're paying a minimum wage of 30,000 Naira and you're taking with the left hand a VAT of 7.2%. That means at the end of the day, the worker is, is still down to ground zero or it's even worsened off. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, indeed. Yes, yeah. you're right. That's a very good way of looking at it. Government has to design this VAT system, including the proposal to increase the rate to 7 or 7.2% in such a way that it does not erode the value of the minimum wage being paid to workers. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to make a lot of basic consumption, food, education, um, treatment relating to health care, uh, and all of that. You need to make them zero rated, i.e. you apply VAT rate of 0%. Uh, for those who cannot make zero rated, you have to exempt them from VAT so that the people who really have to bear the burden of a higher VAT rate should be the middle class and the rich people on consumption of things that are not basic. If you don't do that, then this is, you're right, it is giving the minimum wage with one hand and taking it back with another hand of VAT. But if you design it properly, then it should be like taking the extra money from the people that have 
and you still need to take care of the rest of society, which is what should be done normally. Mm. It's a very dicey situation because, you know, uh, issues around VAT increase has been there for a very long time. I think the VAT of 5% was imposed by the then military government of Saudi Abacha, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, President yes. Obasanjo, during his time, wanted to increase VAT. I think he even increased it. He increased uh, VAT oh. during his time, President Obasanjo, to 10%. President Yarodo came in and reversed it uh, to 5%. During the former minister's tenure, uh, there's uh, the minister that was ousted, uh, Minister Kemi Adiosho. She also moved, oh, we need to raise VAT. It seems now that Zemna Ahmed is coming to that conclusion and perhaps they are having stark reality before them that there could be a revenue crisis, which I agree that government needs money, but is this the way to go also? Are there things that the yeah. government needs to do to limit the effect, perhaps if this comes into effect by 2020? I've asked you two questions in one. Yes, yes, you're right. You know, the history of VAT in Nigeria dates back to 1993, uh, during the military era. And at the time, it was 5% because Nigeria wanted to test whether this system can even work in our country. The plan had always been to increase it progressively uh, from 5 to somewhere around 10 or 15 to harmonize with the rest of ECOWAS because we are the big brother of the ECOWAS region. Uh, but unfortunately, every government subsequently had been focusing on the rate alone without thinking about the reform of the entire VAT system. So if you increase the rate, uh, you don't solve the problem of revenue generation. You may even find out that by increasing the rate, you collect even less, less revenue. Less revenue, yes. Yes. So what government needs to do is to do a comprehensive reform of the VAT system. Some of the issues are some of what I've raised. One, you create a threshold. It's not every business that needs to register for VAT and be filing returns on a monthly basis. You only do that when you are a medium or large firm. Number two, you have to ensure that a lot of basic consumption, food, medical care, education, are not liable to VAT so that the poorest people can at least survive. And then you have to ensure that people get input credit for any VAT they pay, so long as they're not the final consumer. That's what you find in developed countries, such that if a business is doing raw materials and they pay VAT, that VAT they pay, they can get it back as a credit, so that the cost of production does not go up. And then you have to also ensure that the refund system works. In Nigeria, if by the application of what we call input and output vast system, if you have an overpayment to government, it's almost impossible to get a refund. Whereas in other countries, I was in Rwanda about two, a, two months ago, and they gave me the assurance that people get VAT refund within 30 days. Now, so if we keep talking about our rate is one of the lowest in the world, but we're not doing other things that other countries are doing better that we are not doing, then that our story is not complete. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if we make a decision uh, with, with incomplete data or wrong data, it's likely going to have unintended consequences that might even outweigh the benefits we are hoping to get from a rate increase. I sympathize with the government, especially when it comes to the issue of revenue mobilization. Uh, but, but what this also means is that for every government contract or every contract that is done, uh, when this is implemented, you should expect to pay a 7.2% VAT uh, on those contracts, unlike the 5% earlier, because... Uh, the, the argument people also have is that if you are increasing it, why should you increase it when uh, the cost of production is very high too in the country? You provide your power, you provide your road, you provide all the basic amenities that you have. If you go to other countries that do have high VAT, they've, you know, subsidized a lot of things or things are actually working. Like the Rwanda, which you talked about, it takes six hours to open a business in Rwanda. Uh, ease of doing business is very easy. Uh, in Rwanda. But let's come to this other discussion since we're talking about taxes. The 0.005% police trust fund levy. Just like you said, I think I, I, I read your article. Yes, was it your article or, uh, or what you said on Twitter or something? We are living in a taxing times. <laughs> it's taxing times now. We should be afraid of the tax master. So what that <laughs> means is that every business the after-tax profit of the business, 0.005% of it goes to the police trust fund and in form of a levy to improve training and funding. For example, that communications 
when it uh, releases its result and makes an after pro tax profit of XYZ, 0.005% of that XYZ after tax profit goes to the police, isn't it? Yes, correct. That's correct. Um, no, this is a, a bad move. This one I can tell you categorically that uh, it is not in the interest of Nigeria. So you say police needs funds, that's a fact. Uh, you say let's levy taxes on businesses so that we can fund the police. That's a very wrong move. On one hand, um, I'll say that if you are in a hole, it is logical that you stop digging. And if you have a police that you currently provide some funding, but there's lack of transparency as to how those monies are being spent, uh, you cannot solve that problem by increasing uh, the amount of money that you give to them without first addressing the issues around efficiency of spending, transparency of the amount that is allocated to them. And when you introduce an additional tax to businesses, it simply increases the uh, complication about the tax system and the ease of doing business in Nigeria. We have seen instances where we said, let's fund education, we introduce education tax uh, fund. Uh, we all know what the story is today. Education is not anywhere as good as it was even when that tax was introduced. The same way they said, let's develop Nigeria for technology and introduce uh, IT tax under the NICTA Act. Today we know Nigeria is not doing anything dramatically different from whatever it is we were doing before that tax was introduced. We have a lot of them, industrial training fund, and the list goes on. We cannot at every point in time say, because we want to fund uh, any project or any agency, introduce a new tax. The more taxes you introduce, the more complicated the system, the more the inefficiency and leakages, the more the corruption, uh, the less that government actually indeed makes from uh, those taxes. And so my view is that if government wants to fund the uh, police more, they should just allocate more funding from the taxes already being paid by businesses, not introducing a new tax. Okay, lastly, before I let you go, the... Uh VAT on online transactions. The FIRS has directed the banks to charge VAT, I think from next year also, on online transactions. In fact, a colleague of mine, when this uh, came out, was it some weeks ago, he did ask me, Nancy, does that mean if I buy Amala online? You know, we have a lot of <laughs> online <laughs> companies, virtual companies right now that do not have fiscal office spaces. Does that mean if I buy Amala? That means I have to pay online for buying Amala. Okay, that's a good question. Um, not necessarily. So currently in the VAT law, we have basic food items. And FRS says basic food items are the um, food items that are unprocessed. So if you go online and you buy uh, on food yam or beans, you will not pay VAT. Because if you buy it offline, you also will not pay VAT. But if you buy amala that's already been prepared, there's VAT whether you buy it online or offline. It's just that offline, uh, a lot of people are not even paying when there's VAT. The same way that the online people are also not paying. So my view on this is that the VAT problem we have, it, it's not really an online problem. It's a problem with the system. So if anybody is doing online business, uh, it's either they are in Nigeria themselves as a supplier, selling goods online, or they are selling services online. You could also have the online provider being non-resident. So uh, this person is outside Nigeria, they are selling goods into Nigeria like Amazon, or they are outside Nigeria and they are providing services. Now in those four categories I just gave you, three of them are already covered. If you're a service provider in Nigeria or selling goods in Nigeria online, government knows you, they know your address, you live in Nigeria, they can go after you and say, charge VAT. If you are outside Nigeria and you are selling goods into Nigeria, when they get to the border, custom we collect the VAT, so that's not a problem. So the size of the problem we have is smaller than the solution we are trying to profile. Uh, I think what government needs to do is to key into the global initiative uh, being driven by the OECD, uh, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, because the issues to do with digital economy are global issues. They cannot be solved alone by one country, uh, let alone Nigeria. So when you are talking about dealing with the Googles of this world, the Facebook, you can go now on Facebook or you go on to Instagram and you put an advance. How would government stop it? How would they collect VAT? Because 
your contract is with a country or a company outside Nigeria. I think that's really going to be, should be the focus of government, not making it difficult for online businesses to thrive because that's the future of the world. We need to encourage people to do businesses online, not discourage them. Mm. So many issues. You know, when I uh, spoke with Babatunde Fala two weeks ago on this issue, when we, we had a chat on this issue, and he said, uh, you see Nigerians, they go abroad and they pay higher taxes or they pay higher VATs abroad. Then why can't we pay it here in the country? The other argument could also be why not just charge higher VAT on luxury goods, just like you said, isn't it? Luxury tax. Yes. Yeah. Now, even though I don't think the luxury tax is the way to go, when they say they want to do luxury tax, it's only good for political narratives uh, because how much mm. is the amount you're going to collect from luxury tax? The other countries around the world that they use as the example, paying higher VAT rates, they have designed their system such that when they finish collecting the VAT, they use it to take care of the poor people. So those are countries where you have welfare systems that work. Those are mm. countries where you have infrastructure that work. People don't provide their own electricity. They don't fix their own role. So you cannot, on one hand, say, let's pay higher taxes, and we are still taking care of ourselves. It's, so there's no society that can survive. Uh, with that kind of a structure. Okay. So we have to get to the point where we start using the tax system to take care of the people and then we'll be justified to ask them to pay a higher rate. And that higher rate has also to be designed such that the burden falls on the middle class and the upper class but not the poorest people in Nigeria. Uh, we are currently the world capital of poverty. We need to bear that in mind. How we design our tax system also has to be fair yeah. to our situation, mm -hmm. not make it worse. I think, I think we'll leave it at that, you know, I think we'll leave it at that. Some other countries are also even reducing their taxes. We saw what happened in the United States. Trump, President Trump, when he came in, corporate tax, I think from 35% to 21%, now to encourage companies to do better, perhaps employ more people. And we see what's happening even in the U.S. Jobless, jobless rate or unemployment rate has gone down. But we'll continue to look at this, and just like you said, that the government still wants to engage with stakeholders. I'm hoping that they would also get across to people like you and the tax associations, and let's see what happens at the end of the day. Many thanks, uh, Mr. Uh, Oyedele, for joining me today. Thank you for having me.